In this video, we focus on the two types of mixtures that exist, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. As far as the matter diagram goes, in this video we are focusing on the bottom right hand corner and we will start with heterogeneous mixtures. Heterogeneous mixtures consist of two or more substances that have visibly distinguishable regions called phases, which have different physical and chemical properties. A heterogeneous mixture is not uniform throughout, and if we were to obtain a small subsample of a heterogeneous mixture, it would not be representative of the whole piece of matter in question. Some common examples include chocolate chip cookies, where you can visually see at least two distinct phases, Pizza, again, you can visually see lots of different phases or regions which have vastly different chemical and physical properties. Granite is another example with its familiar granular structure containing white quartz, orange feldspar, and the darker colored mica. Each of these phases is visually distinguishable and each has its own set of physical and chemical properties. We could also imagine using a simple physical process to crush or grind this piece of granite to isolate a piece of quartz, for example, as a way of separating this heterogeneous mixture into its constituent components. Oil vinegar salad dressing is another example where two visually distinguishable phases are apparent with the liquid oil phase sitting atop the liquid aqueous phase. And muddy water is a heterogeneous mixture of suspended clay or silt particles in water. Now these heterogeneous mixtures may have phases that are in the same physical state. For example, the three phases of granite are all in the solid state and the two phases of the salad dressing are both liquids. Or the phases may be in different physical states, such as the muddy water mixture where solid dirt particles are dispersed through liquid water. It's also important that we remember that heterogeneous mixtures are readily separated into their constituent components by very simple physical techniques such as cutting, crushing, grinding, filtration or centrifugation. And that's a little different to homogeneous mixtures as we will see in just a moment. Whereas heterogeneous mixtures have two or more visibly distinct phases, homogeneous mixtures consist of two or more substances mixed together but where only one visually distinct phase is apparent. And this phase has uniform properties. Homogeneous mixtures are also called solutions and we say that one substance is dissolved in another. The solutes are dissolved in the solvent where the solvent is the substance present in the greatest amount and the solutes are all the other substances present in that mixture. Examples of homogeneous mixtures or solutions include seawater, where we have a solid dissolved in a liquid, that is solid sodium chloride salt dissolved in liquid water. Alcoholic beverages such as wine, where we have a liquid dissolved in a liquid, for example, liquid ethanol dissolved in liquid water. Air can also be considered to be a homogeneous mixture where we have oxygen and other trace gases essentially dissolved in nitrogen gas. And that's a gas-gas solution. And amalgams, which are metal-metal solutions where one metal is dissolved in another, typically involving mercury. For homogeneous mixtures or solutions, the matter in question is uniform throughout and a small subsample will be representative of the whole. However, it should be noted that even though any single sample of a homogeneous mixture will be uniform throughout, the composition may vary from sample to sample depending on the relative ratio of the substances that are mixed. And if the composition varies, so too can the physical and chemical properties. So for example, we might have two samples of salt water prepared by dissolving firstly a small amount of salt in water and then secondly a much larger amount of salt in water. Both salt water solutions will be homogeneous and uniform throughout but both samples will have different compositions and both will have different physical and chemical properties, including different densities, different electrical conductivities, and different boiling points. Homogeneous mixtures are readily separated by techniques such as distillation or other techniques that rely on a change of state, such as cryogenic freezing or crystallization, where we are able to induce a change of state to take advantage of differences in certain physical properties such as differences in boiling points, differences in freezing points, or differences in solubility of the constituent components. So in order to separate out solutions into their constituent components, we generally need a separation technique that relies on a change of state. 
In this video, we have concentrated on the bottom right hand corner, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. In the next video, we are going to have a close look at the two types of substances, elements and compounds.